everybody welcome back to the channel nice to see you again we've got a new project today which is going to revolve around the pea puffers which are currently in this tank um, it's just not big enough these guys have been in here as a bit of a temporary measure for well too long basically I moved them out of one of my office display tanks into this tank just to make some space because I wanted to do another project up there and then the tank I was planning to put them in, I did a different project and then one thing led to another and they've just been in here far too long. So this tank I think is about 40 litres and it's just not big enough and I've come in twice recently and saw a load of aggression going on. I've seen some pea puffers puffing up, I've never seen that before and I've seen it twice in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I think it's just that the tank isn't big enough, there's not enough space for them all. Um, it is a bit sparse this plant right in the front. I only added that yesterday. Um, so I'm going to move them into a bigger tank. And the tank I've got prepared for them is this one. So this is a hundred and something litres. Much, much bigger uh, much better. It's a better height for me as well because I can see what's going on. Um, completely empty at the moment but I will be rescaping this. Scaping. Um, really just going to try and do something that will make them a bit more comfortable and hopefully we might even get a bit of breeding action. Some sterling work by number one son. We've now got a bucket full of sand that's been nicely rinsed but in my experience it doesn't really matter how much you rinse it, it's still going to make the water go a bit cloudy so I'm just going to get it in there and deal with it once it's in. He says not having a plan of how to actually get it in there. Where's my scoopy thing? So as I said before, I'm really just going for a fine dusting on the bottom. So I'm only wanting a few scoops. That's really not bad actually. So perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. It's just got a fine dusting. Um, it stops any reflections uh, and then we'll go on to phase two. So next thing is I want to get a bit of cover in there. Some plants, some pieces of wood, something like that. The idea here is I'm going to try and cultivate a load of growth in there which gives them places to heat because ultimately I want these guys to breed. Uh, and breeding conditions for pea puffers is, I've never done it, but technically it's meant to be very straightforward. You just need to get the temperature right and provide loads of cover. So they they're um, egg scatterers, so the males and the females might chase each other around a bit, there might be a bit of fighting, and that might be what I've seen there when I've seen the males uh, and the females going for each other and having a bit of spats going on there, so it can only help if I get them into a decent sized aquarium. But yet they go into the undergrowth, they have a little fumble, <laughs> for want of a better term, uh, scatter the eggs into the undergrowth, and then and from there on they can actually grow in there as well. So if you get some insephoria or some baby brain shrimp and things like that, you can bring them on. Um, so to that end, I have a bunch of different pots and I have a bunch of different plants. So again, it is a fish room. I don't want to put in three inches worth of substrate to grow plants in here. So I'm just going to have some really easy to grow plants in some pots, put some gravel in the pots, get the plants in and we should be good to go. So the first plant that I've got, uh, I picked up from, you might have seen it in my last video. I picked it up from Sustainable Aquatics. It's the Pogostemus erectus, Fenar Fenar, which is this here. So it's grows quite tall really good I've kept this before it's really good um, in a load of different conditions so it should do well in this tank and it's dead easy to propagate as well so when it gets too tall you snip a bit off and you plant a bit more so you've seen me do this in other videos before I'm going to fill this with a bit of gravel up in the plant probably get two plants and something this size and top it off with gravel and that should just keep it in place nice and steady so to prepare these, I'm just going to take the pots off. You can see they've got a really nice good root structure on these ones. Uh, I mean, uh, most of these plants that I'm going to be using today, they all feed mostly from the water column. Uh, but they will take whatever they can get from the, the roots, obviously. Um, it comes in this rock wool stuff, as you see. So I'm just going to break off the majority of that. And tease it away. 
don't want it to be too rough because then you just end up ripping all the roots off and it's not the end of the world if you don't get it all off. So I've got most of it off there as you can see. I might spend a little bit longer on these. As you can see there's one plant, well there's probably two actually. So in each of these pots I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight individual plants. So what you can do with this is, once it's in, and as it grows, cut off and plant new ones. So just continually propagating. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this rock wool to plug up the hole in the bottom of the pot fill it with a little bit of gravel and start putting these plants in. Simple as that. So here I've got my little bit of gravel, put some of that in to start, give it a bit of a base and then literally I'm just going to grab some of these plants, spread them out reasonably reasonably well and then just gently top that up going around so I'm trying not to crush the plants but I'm trying to make sure that they do get weighed down you can kind of separate them out a little bit afterwards as well so hopefully that should then leave a little bit of space so as if I do want to propagate these afterwards I have some space to do that and it really is as simple as that. Now, if I was being really picky, I might then want to go and include some root tabs or something in here. But I'm pretty sure we'll be alright with these plants. So, I'm just going to go and drop that into the tank. So, we'll just put that in now. Just being careful not to let it fall and smash the glass. Watch out for Mr. Snail. And there we go. So that's kind of exactly what I wanted. I've planted one full side of that, which gives me a bit of space to keep that planting going. So I'll do a couple more smaller pots with that. I've got one more pot of Pogus Stemmen to go. And then I think we'll use some of this stuff, some Limnophilia City Flora. I always feel like I'm casting spells when I'm trying to use Latin names. Um, but yeah, we'll come back when we've done that. Got a few pots already, they're fine. Uh, I think I'll just get a few more stones, maybe a couple of bits of wood just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. But I think I've kind of got the look that I want, so just a bit of reorganising and then we'll get the fish in. Just about finished, I think. It's not the most beautiful aquascape that anyone's ever done, but it's more functional than anything else. Uh, I think it's nice and bushy. We've got a lot of plant cover there, it's only going to grow in more. Got a few rocks, a few twigs just to break up some sight lines and things like that. Essentially I've left it clear at the front um, so as it can have a feeding area so when I feed the, can, the stuff will drop down here and they can pick away at it and if they want to hide away they can get away in at the back and hide in there. So the next job is to get the fish in I guess. So I'm going to use a little tub like this I guess. See if I can shepherd the peas into here. Don't want to net them out because with all puffer fish you don't really want to expose them to air unnecessarily. It'll probably be fine but you still want to avoid it. Get them in here, uh, make sure the temperatures are matching and then just let them out. So we're going to do a bit of shepherding then. So there we go, they're all in, they're happy. Exploring around, having a look. Uh, in terms of tank setup as well as this, the temperature I'm going for about kind of 26 degrees and they seem to be most happy with that. Um, again I've used sand as a substrate as you can see. They like to hunt around in the substrate for their blood worms I've noticed. So I don't want to go with, or I didn't want to go with gravel and I've since actually read that that's quite a common behaviour as they will dig around in there and they even use that a little bit to help grind their teeth down or keep their teeth sharp at least. Um, most puffer fish you have to feed them shellfish and hard shelled things to keep their teeth trimmed so you don't have to worry about trimming their teeth. It's not really the case for pea puffers. Um, they, their teeth don't work the same way, they don't continually grow but all the same foods are still good for them so a main diet of snails for these guys. Um, 
blood worms. I've never really got them to take um, dried foods very well. So live foods, frozen foods, really good. Snails, of which I have an abundant supply, also really good. Um, the Hikari vibrabites, they sometimes work. Um, I've had varying success with them. Sometimes if I feed them with um, some real blood worms, they will sometimes take them. But I've never managed to get them to take them on their own. But they're great little hunters, these guys. So they will, I'll put in a bunch of snails and they will go after them. Uh, males and females, quite hard to tell when they're young, but when they're older, the males have a kind of a darker continuous stripe that just um, isn't the case with the females. Um, and I think they behave better in groups or larger groups. So I've got a group of five in here at the moment. I did have six, but I lost one quite early on. Um, a lot of people will say you can keep one or two or three, and it's true. I did keep three um, for a long time, and it was fine. But, but the difference when I added another three, um, it was ridiculous. They were out constantly, really active, uh, a lot more interaction between the fish as well so I think they just do better with larger groups and um, I've heard that it's best to add them all at the same time rather than stagger them because they can establish little colonies and get upset if you add more so that's why I've just left this as a five rather than trying to add another one to bring it up to six and um, they still are behaving the same way with just five but hopefully we'll get some breeding action at some point and get up to six naturally if not a lot more Anyway, let's grab some food and we'll add that in. So, for snails, I've got a mixture here of bladder snails, uh, ram's horn snails, and Malaysian trumpet snails. So, Malaysian trumpet snails, you normally wouldn't feed the puffers because the shell's a bit too hard. But, as they're not actually going to eat the shell, um, they usually just, it actually provides a bit of enrichment, I find, because they chase them down for ages trying to figure out how to suck the snails out of there. So, we'll stick them in. And as you can see, straight on them going, what's that? They'll go on the hunt, do a bit of stalking, figure out how to eat it. And I, think, I feel this is really good because quite often when you feed snails like this, the first thing the snail does is retract itself. So it often rebuffs the early attacks. So it keeps them interested for a while. Yeah, so bladder horn, bladder horn, bladder snails, ram's horns, and Malaysian trumpet snails is what I've got at the moment. As well as that, I'll feed some live foods if I ever get them from the, the pet shop. But it's been a while since I've got any of them. I must be honest. And some frozen foods, so bloodworms are a favourite for these guys. Um, they don't tend to be interested in Daphnia, I found, or brine shrimp. Best kept alone in a species only tank, I think. Um, they're very nippy fish. In fact, the only time I've ever seen them puff up is when they've been nipping each other, so they'll even go for one another. Um, I'm not sure whether that was breeding behaviour or whether it was just because the tank wasn't really big enough for all of them, so we shall see with a little more space. Um, but hit that subscribe button and if it is breathing you will be the first to know about it anyway we'll leave it there folks thank you very much for watching um, hit that subscribe button it's free and it really does help me out and we'll catch you next time bye